Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and module number three on reactive chemistry. <clears throat> this is video number 21 and we're going to take a bit of a look today at galvanic cells. Here is a galvanic cell. Think of a galvanic cell as a displacement reaction which you've separated out in order to allow the electrons to move between the two metals rather than interacting directly between the metals and the ions in solution. So we now know that if you place a piece of zinc into a copper solution, the zinc will displace the copper. The zinc will go from uh, zinc metal or solid into zinc ions in the solution. The copper will come out of solution, that is copper ions, and will form copper solid. It'll plate out. We can actually take advantage of this reaction and produce something that's akin to a battery, or at least a single cell of a battery. We call these galvanic cells or electrochemical cells. And the reason for that is that they use chemical energy to produce electricity. There are a number of different concepts that are important to understand when we're looking at classifying both galvanic cells and also analyzing them for the changes that can occur. This diagram shows a large number of the important terms and or components that are part of a galvanic cell. The first one is that the light globe, which is the um, loading device which is being used in this particular um, cell could be replaced with a voltmeter and if we replace it with a voltmeter then it will tell us what the voltage or potential difference is across this particular cell that is the difference between the electropotentials of the zinc half cell and the copper half cell what's going on over on the left is that zinc metal is forming zinc ions in solution with electrons. Because it is losing electrons, it must be an example of oxidation. We need to remember anox, because anox tells us that oxidation occurs at the anode. So therefore, the zinc is an anode. Now an anode is a type of electrode. And an electrode is a substance that allows an electric current to flow. So you can see that the zinc anode is actually connected to an external wire. And this external wire is going to um, connect the two half cells together. Electrons that are being lost from the zinc are actually flowing through this wire towards the copper electrode. At the copper electrode, copper ions in solution are taking in those electrons and forming copper solid. This is electron gain, gain of electrons. When electrons are gained, we have an example of reduction. And as we remember an ox, we must also remember about our red cat. Our red cat tells us that reduction occurs at the cathode. The cathode is also an electrode. The cathode is the place where reduction occurs. So in this case, we have a copper cathode and we have a zinc anode. This by itself would not be sufficient. We need to close the circuit. If we're going to have electricity to flow through this circuit, then we must have a complete circuit. So there needs to be no gaps. We fill the gaps with something called a salt bridge. The salt bridge is usually a material like filter paper soaked in a solution, which is often potassium nitrate. Neither the potassium nor the nitrate are going to form precipitates as they move between the solutions, and therefore, um, this is a very good choice for our salt bridge. The loss of copper from the right-hand side means the copper iron concentration is going to be dropping. 
This is going to affect the blue colour of the solution. In fact, it's going to become less blue. But it also means that the anion, in this case the sulphate ions, will start to dominate. We'll have too many. So those sulphate ions will actually start to migrate their way through the salt bridge. The negative ions that are moving through the salt bridge, or anions, are creating this closed circuit. Negative electrons are moving through the external circuit in one direction, and the negative ions are moving through that internal part of the circuit in the opposite direction, closing our circuit. Of course, the fact that we have a large number of zinc ions being produced at the anode means that the concentration of zinc ions is actually going to increase. This excess of positive charge will draw in those anions from the opposite solution, but they may also push away some positive ions uh, in the opposite direction. And when we're looking at circuits, we do need to be aware of the fact that positive charge moves in an opposite direction to negative charge. This pretty much gives us all of the keys to understanding galvanic cells. The most important thing about galvanic cells is you are going to be given a table of standard reduction potentials. And we'll look at that in a future video. That's going to give you all the key equations that you need to be able to work out what's actually going on in a galvanic cell and indeed how much voltage a particular galvanic cell can produce. But we're going to look at that in another video. Thanks for watching.